um, and want you to work on your trajectory. So go out there. Uh, if you get a chance to practice, if you've got some wiffle balls in your yard or uh, if you've got a snag club, whatever you have, go out there and try to hit the same club with three different trajectories. Try to hit one super low, super high, and one in the middle. And the more you do that, the better you're going to get at the game of golf. I promise you. And the better you can lean the shaft forward at impact, I promise you the ball will go farther. Guaranteed, the ball will go farther. Uh, matter of fact, if you lean the shaft backwards at impact, 99.992349% uh, of the time, you're going to come up short when you try to hit an iron into a hole. So we don't want to come up short. We want to be spot on. Now, <clears throat> making sure um, we talked about the bunker rules, uh, we're going to go to the tee box. And this is the trivia question portion of today's lesson. And I want to know what you guys know about the tee box. So making sure that everybody is on the same. Let me lower these guys back down here. Okay, we've got a couple tee markers. Uh, got a couple uh, tee markers here. Now, make sure you raise your hand. Um, Mr. Daniel's going to call on you. Am I allowed to tee up in front of the tee markers? So if I'm hitting it this way, what am I allowed to tee off right here? Anybody? No. No, that's correct. You're not. You're not allowed to tee off in front of tee markers. It's like the free throw line in basketball. You can be equal to here. Or can somebody tell me how many club links you can go behind the tee markers? Two. That's correct. Two. Two club links. So <clears throat> very important. Now, this is one that gets a lot of people. So I, I make sure you're raising your hand on here. We want to make sure we get different people answering this. So if I get up here, I got the knee waggle, got the club waggle, and I accidentally hit the ball like this and it rolls off the tee. Does that count as a shot in golf? Uh, Luke. Yes. Does? Okay. So, so let's 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 talk about this real quick, Luke. All right, put this guy up here. Now, when we get to the tee box, and we're getting ready to hit the hit hit our hit our big drive, the ball is not in play yet until we make an attempt to hit the ball the ball is a ball considered in play so if i'm up there and i'm giving it the old waggle here and i accidentally tap the ball and it falls off the tee that does not count as a shot i can put the ball back on the tee and then go ahead and hit my first shot for that hole now after I, and that means the ball is in play once i've hit that ball or i've made an attempt to hit the ball uh the ball is considered in play and from that point on if I got up there, let's just say, you know, I hit a monster drive that went about, I don't know, 13 inches out here. So now I get up here, and I'm giving my knee waggle, giving a club waggle, and I accidentally hit the ball. I actually have to put the ball back and add a one-shot penalty and then play from there. Real important. So the next question, if I am here, <clears throat> I'm going to hit the big drive here, and I swing back. I'm on the tee box now. I swing back, and I take a mighty swing, and I miss the ball. Does that count as a shot? Uh, Cody. Yes. That's correct. It does count as a shot because I made an attempt to hit the ball and put it in play, even though I completely missed it. So now when I get up here and I finally hit my drive, I'm actually hitting my second shot of the day. So now a minute ago we talked about we had two club links going back behind the T markers here. Can I stand outside of that imaginary rectangle and hit a ball that's inside the imaginary rectangle? Alexander. I think you can. Yeah, that's correct, you can. As long as the ball is in that imaginary rectangle, I can stand anywhere, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. As long as you're equal to or behind the, the, the T markers, your two club links back, you can put that ball in there. Now I'm going to give you guys a little bit of strategy here. Um, and this is important when you're playing golf. So I'm going to pretend you guys are down the fairway looking at me here. Get this out of the way. So 
if you slice the golf ball or fade the golf ball, which that means you hit a shot for a right-handed golfer that goes from left to right. So if I hit a left to right shot, when I tee off, I'm going to come over here more to the right side of the tee box. So now I can aim more down the left side of the fairway, and that kind of makes the fairway a little bit bigger. If I hit a shot that goes right to left, I'm going to come over here more on the left side, and that way I can aim a little more down the right so it has more room for the ball to curve back to the middle. If I'm a pretty straight hitter of the golf ball, I'm just going to put it pretty much in the middle unless I'm trying to get a specific angle uh, on that hole. Um, <clears throat> Man, I just lost my train of thought. Can you believe that? It just jumped right out of my head. So once again, areas on the tee box may give you better angles based on how you play. So try try hitting from different spots. Don't always tee it up right in the middle. You may play better from the right side. You may play better from the left side. Now here's another trivia question for you. Do you have to tee the ball up on the tee box? Uh, Sanat. Yeah. Are you sure? On the tee box, do you have to tee the ball? Can you hit the ball off the ground on the tee box? Yes, you can. Yes, you can hit it off the ground. You do not have to put it on the tee. That's, uh, that's something, um, you know, that's, that's your personal preference on the par threes. Some people will hit it off the ground. Some people actually take their, their club and whack into the turf and make the turf pop up just a little bit and they'll put their ball right on top of that. So interesting, but that's kind of the way things are there. Now, going back, quick little recap. Oops, I'm on the wrong page. You guys aren't par, you're birdie. Okay, so um, talking about sportsmanship, make sure that we always conduct ourselves the right way. Uh, a vision, you know, think about our goals, where we want to be. We have a vision of where we want to be. We're going to set goals to reach that vision. Outcome goals are the end product of what we want. The performance goals are kind of identifying our personal best um, and practicing and getting to, to make that personal best a little bit better. And then the process goals is going to be the things that you do to get better, uh, how you improve your skills, your techniques, the process you go through. So make sure you understand those. Once again, in your yardage book, those are on page 54. Um, so make sure that you go through, really review those because those are going to be on the test. Make sure you know the definitions. Um, and those, those goals were actually put, uh, put into the system probably about three years ago. So those are pretty new to first tee, uh, but they're really, really important. So you got to understand those. And once again, my favorite is process. Um, and the more specific your process is, I think the better your outcome is going to end up being. So please work on that. Make sure you have a good pre-shot routine uh, and work on having that exactly the same. Does anybody have any questions? No questions? You don't have questions? Hmm. Did, did anybody remember to save me half their Easter candy? No? no, I did. What you did? Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. But it's quarantine, so you can't have it. Oh, man. Okay, next year. So next year. I ate it. Uh, it's, sorry, my bad. Ah, well, okay, that's all right. I don't need candy right now. Candy's bad for you anyway. All that sugar makes me all hyper and jittery. And Lord knows I don't need to be more hyper and more jittery. You can have, okay. Coach, you can have Coach Brittany's candy. Hers is all vegan and sugar free. <laughs> Cody's, uh, Cody's got his yardage book out. Dude, good job, Cody. I like that. Was I right about page 54? Cody? Lillian saying yes. Wait, man. Like a steel trap, nothing gets in. Oh, wait. Uh, wait. Well, guys, thank you so much. If we don't have any other questions, um, Please, if there's anything that we can do to uh, to yeah. help out, um, please let us know. Uh, we're here for you to do whatever we can. And I need a um, what? Did somebody say something? Somebody needs a putter. You can get mine. Um. So as we wrap up this uh 
I hope you all have a great week, and we will see you uh, next Wednesday night. If you need anything, let us know uh, between now and then, and we're happy to help out in any way we can. So you all have a great evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Cool. See you guys. Thanks for joining in. You need a putter. Yeah. yeah. I lost you. What'd you do? Bye. Who, who who is that? Me, Linnell. Linnell, you need a putter? Yes. Hey, Coach Brittany, right, are you still listening? Bye. Hang on, Linnell. Wait one second. Coach Brittany, Linnell. are you still there? Linnell, can you have your parents email me? Yeah. Okay, t tell them to send me an email saying you need a putter, and we'll work on getting you one, okay? Yeah, right. Coach Coach Brittany's doing some of those deliveries on Friday. So if they can send that tonight okay. or tomorrow morning, um, that way we get that on, on the list and we can get that, get that to you this week. All right? And just because I like you so much, Linnell, I'm not even going to charge you the five bucks. <laughs> It'll be free this time, but next time on, I'm gonna charge you. It's not five bucks. <laughs> He's just taking money from babies. Oh, that's taking candy from babies. <laughs> Linnell. He charges you a Linnell's snicker bar. My man. <laughs> All right, y'all have a great day. Uh -huh. Talk to you soon. All right, see you guys. Bye.